Welcome to the economic countdown. If you're thinking that the challenging 2020 times will end when the year is over, we're sorry to let you know that the collapse has just begun. The challenges of the coming year will be marked by the consequences of the disastrous response to the health crisis. This has shut down businesses' economic activity over several rounds of government-mandated lockdowns. The damage caused will not be undone overnight. Not even a vaccine that we hope actually works will help us get out of the economic pit our country has fallen into. The truth is that the damage done in the job markets, the huge wave of business bankruptcy, the absolutely incredible level of accumulated debt in the housing market and the expiration of federal aid will stagnate the U.S. economy growth much longer than one thinks possible. Additionally, with the stock market highly based on speculative, hopeful stimulus projections, we're about to see much more instability in the financial markets over the coming months. If you think 2020 was bad, wait until you see what's going to happen in 2021. In today's video, we're going to look at a series of events that are ready to start unfolding early next year and are about to inject a whole new level of economic destabilization while pushing us towards a new normal standard that is completely abnormal, so keep watching. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe it. 21st Century Economic Depression Many are under the impression that as we enter the new year, all that went wrong in 2020 will be left behind us. Unfortunately, this is not the case. When we take a look at our economic wounds and our social scenario, it becomes quite clear that there's no way around it. Eventually, our reckoning day will arrive and many of the problems that were triggered during this year will have to be faced. While the mainstream media is selling us the idea that as soon as the health crisis is under control and the vaccine is widely distributed, everything will come back to normal, Economists, market strategists, and scholars have all been saying that the new normal will include an unprecedented huge level of surveillance, government dependency, repression, and economic stagnation, or worse, deterioration. In short, nothing will ever be normal again. The health crisis has gravely wounded the world economy with serious problems for everyone. The Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Markeisha Kashui, has said moving rapidly across borders along the principal arteries of the global economy. The spread of the virus has benefited from the underlying interconnectedness and frailties of globalization catapulting a global health crisis into a global economic shock that has hit the most vulnerable the hardest. The reality is the multiple problems that spread around the world quickly after the beginning of the outbreak were sparked but not caused by it. World leaders realized what a great opportunity the outbreak was to quietly advance their agenda and finally force a global financial reset. To do so, they've been counting on policymakers, who you might have noticed by now have been passing measures that contribute to the decay and destruction of the current financial system. Now, globalists don't bother to hide their plans anymore. Many of them have been saying that we must get used to the idea that the world will never go back to normal again. This isn't because of the effects of the coronavirus, but because of the loophole it's created, which has allowed the elites to expand their control over the global population. They simply don't want and won't let things come back to where they were. The Great Reset, as the World Economic Forum calls it, started to develop years ago, but never in history has the global population been so desperate that they would probably accept any solution to help with the financial burden provoked by the current recession. That's why several analysts have warned that the catastrophic economic events of early 2021 will also be used by globalists to condone a shift to a system where almost every aspect of our lives will be unrecognizable. This is their long-awaited chance. The economic and financial downturn we are experiencing could have been completely avoided if more effective action was taken since the start of the crisis. Most of the regulations enacted led businesses to close and people to lose their jobs and fall into poverty. Now with the expiration of federal protections that have helped millions to stay with a roof over their heads and food on their tables, a homeless crisis will likely be seen by January while the hunger crisis worsens and affects over 50 million Americans. Landlords and tenants everywhere have been pleading to Congress for help and for the most part have been left without an answer. 
real estate and housing companies are constantly signaling about the dangers of inaction. Doctors have been upfront about the terrible repercussions that mass evictions will cause to the public's health, particularly since we're at the worst of the peak of the outbreak. All the evidence is plain to see, and yet they choose to do nothing to prevent a major calamity. This ignorance to people suffering isn't a result of harsh circumstances. In fact, it gives us a clear picture of how the intentions of both the elites and governments around the world are perfectly aligned. They will continue to push us over the edge. They will continue to crush businesses with lockdowns and therefore push millions more out of their jobs, leading many to accumulate debt so that they become inevitably attached and reliant to the system. Moreover, they are letting a hunger and homelessness crisis ravage the lives of our citizens, and in a sense, they're even enabling a potential third wave of problems knowingly just to get us at our most vulnerable state. We are living in historical times when terrible events have become so frequent, we don't even know what to focus on and how on earth we'll get out of this mess. That's exactly the problem. This huge meltdown is just a pull the wool over your eyes crisis. The economic breakdown could have been handled with a lot more care, preventing much of the devastation our economy has undergone this year. The decision of allowing the collapse to unfold and to change millions of lives has allowed elites to use both crisis as an excuse as well as to take advantage of the social fragility generated by housing and food insecurity, as Brandon Smith described in a recent article published at Birch Gold Group. The financial downturn has been created by international banks and central banks through massive debt creation and inflationary stimulus measures. The initial spark for this wildfire took place in 2008. The economic threat has been under the public's nose for quite some time. The economy was put on life support long before the 2020 events. The globalists are simply pulling the plug right now and letting it die at this point. Only a sizable trillion dollar stimulus bill will help to repair some of the damage brought along by the crisis. However, it will also condemn our nation to eternal debt. The unsustainability of the system is exactly what globalists will use as an excuse to impose the new monetary order, which will track each and every one of our transactions and grant the government access to our private banking information. The coming crisis will provide further pretext for them to justify huge intervention in our lives starting with the coming stock market crash. Although stock markets remain hitting all-time highs, the valuation of most leading companies are highly speculative. What's happening in the markets are not a reflection of what's happening in the real economy. Smith explained in the article it does not reflect financial health or the stability on Main Street. The stock market is an artificially propped up Pavlonian bell designed to make the public salivate. Every time the tickers go green, a majority of the people tend to associate stock prices with economic improvement. The extent of the general public's research on stocks is 15 minutes of mainstream news a day along with 30-second reports on the averages rising or falling. That is, a rising average is enough to keep a large percentage of the population thinking and hoping that things are going to get better. Eventually stocks will crash along with almost everything else, just as they did in the hyperinflated markets of Weimar in Germany. Similarly, Motley Fool's Sean Williams has been constantly alerting that historical data is suggesting that another stock market crash is on its way and will potentially happen in 2021. According to Yardani research data, there have been eight bear markets in the S&P 500, which means eight periods of declines of at least 20% over the past 60 years. In the three-year period following the bear market bottom in each of these declines, there were 13 instances when the S&P 500 corrected lower by 10% to 19.9%. Put another way, the typical rebound from a bear market bottom features one or two sizable corrections or crashes of between 10 and 19.9%. Now the data is even more convincing in recent years that we're going to see a sizable pullback in 2021, since the beginning of 2010, the S&P 500 has undergone at least 15 separate pullbacks of 5.8 or more, with 11 of these swoons taking place in a span of 13 to 70 calendar days, Williams disclosed. 
In other words, this means that on an average, every 8.7 months, a substantial market decline is registered on the S&P 500, and emotional traders running out for the exits have been pushing the equities lower and lower and lower. During these crashes and corrections, Williams says based solely on historical data, I'd suggest investors prepare for some downside in 2021. But apart from history, many other determinants are weighing on the market, such as the latest surge in cases and the fact that lockdowns in key states like California and New York weren't expected by investors. On top of that, the lack of federal aid to support the markets, businesses, and the population to stay afloat. Plus, the concerns surrounding the vaccine will likely induce another major sell-off soon enough. When things go south on the stock markets, it's a clear indication that things in the real economy pretty much went from bad to worse. At this stage, we're closer to a double-dip recession than some sort of recovery, according to J.P. Morgan Chase top economist Michael Feroli. The new lockdowns, bankruptcies, and layoffs will shrink economic activity in the first three months of 2021 by some $50 billion. That accounts for an annualized drop of 1% on next year's GDP, and the year hasn't even started yet. Everywhere we look, there are signs that the economic situation is worsening. Just last week, jobless claims rose again while the consumer spending during the seasonal sales events were weaker than expected. In about two weeks, the safety nets that have been assisting millions of Americans will run out and people will be pushed into the streets. In 2020, our most worrying financial problems were unemployment and growing debt, but by early 2021, it can easily become poverty, famine, and homelessness for millions of us. These three agents combined will be far more fatal than the current virus. What's more, the occurrence of a massive financial crash will cause much more chaos than what we have seen this year. The biggest question is, will mass poverty succeed where the health crisis failed in convincing Americans to give up their liberties in exchange for some stability? This is exactly what the global elites are waiting for. Are you ready for this battle? We hope this video gives you some food for thought. God bless America. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe.